All right, in this module, we're gonna look at how to determine what phases are present and the composition of those phases. And we're gonna do this with the isomorphous phase diagram that we looked at in the last module. So phase diagrams allow us to determine what phases are present, like we saw uh, lastly. And they also allow us to do composition, which we'll do in a second. But the idea would, uh, the, the, the main way that we would typically go about this is that we would have a specific temperature and composition in mind, and then we would be able to use the phase diagram to determine what phase or what phases are present. And so let's look at an example of this. So let's say that we're at point A. So a point on the phase diagram implies a temperature, so 1100 degrees Celsius uh, for this one, and uh, a composition of 60 weight percent nickel. And you'll notice here that this is a copper nickel phase diagram. There's only two components. So if I say that it's 60 weight percent nickel, the remainder is copper always, right? So in these binary systems, if I don't specify what the other component is, you can get that based on 100% minus the 60, right? So we have 40 weight percent copper. And in doing that, we can determine a point on the phase diagram here, right where it says A, and we're in this phase field, so this area, where it says we have alpha, right? So that tells me that I have just one phase, alpha, and we know alpha to be the FCC solid solution. And we know that our composition of that one phase is going to be 60 weight percent nickel and 40 weight percent copper, right? That's the, the composition of that one phase. If we look at a different point, B, at 1250 Celsius and 35 weight percent nickel, and again, the remainder is copper, then we're here, we're in this white area, and we see that in that area, it says we have L plus alpha. So whenever you see that plus, it means that we have multiple phases, right? So two phases, liquid and alpha. So this is a mixture of those two. All right. So now let's look at composition, because the thing about point B is that overall in this alloy, I know there's 35 weight percent nickel, right? But in this case, we have two components, right? And so we don't instinctively know how much nickel is in the liquid and how much nickel is in the alpha and vice versa with the copper. So we also need to be able to determine composition of the components. It's easy when it's one phase, right? Because everything, all the nickel, all the copper goes into alpha. But when you have two phases, it's not necessarily uniform uh, distribution. So let's look at what we have there. So we kind of have it zoomed in here. So it's still a phase diagram. We're looking at composition on the X and temperature on the Y, but you can see we only have a narrow composition range and a narrow temperature range. So we're basically focused in on this two phase region. So let's again consider that 35 weight percent. And in this case, let's look at a series of temperatures. So first, um, uh, and when you see the C naught, this just means the composition of the alloy. So how much nickel, how much copper is in the overall mixture, or sorry, overall uh, alloy of these two metals. So at temperature A, we're up here. So we know that we only have liquid. So C, which is the composition, L refers to liquid. So because we only have liquid, then all the nickel, all the copper is in the liquid. So our overall composition of the system is the same as that of the liquid, and that would be 35 weight percent. However, like I said, it becomes more confusing when we get to two component systems. But let's look at the other extreme first. So we're at uh, TD, which is uh, down here, and you can see that only solid or alpha is present. So in the same way, my composition of alpha is the same as my alloy composition, C0. And so that's 35 weight percent. However, we need to be able to determine that, um, what happens in the middle. 
So what happens when we have multiple phases? So here we're going to look at something right in the middle, right? Something that is in this mixture region, because at temperature TB, the point B over here, we see that we have both alpha and liquid present. So we're in this, what we call two phase field. And so in this case, what we're going to use is we're going to use a, a concept known as a tie line to determine the compositions of the two phases in this two phase field. All right, so let's go over what that means. So a tie line, all it is, is a horizontal line. So it's a isotherm, we call it isotherm because it's um, uh, the same temperature. So it's basically a horizontal line at the same temperature drawn in the two phase region, the two phase field through point B, our point of interest, and basically terminating at the two lines, the one representing uh, all solid above, which we call the liquidus, and the one with all solid below, which we call the solidus. So basically we draw a line, a horizontal line at TB, going through our point till we intersect the liquidus and solidus. This is known as the tie line. So what that does, is it it tells us the composition of the liquid and the composition of the solid. So if we follow the line to the liquidus, that point, if we trace it down in composition of 32 weight percent nickel, is the composition of the liquid. And if we follow the other, the intersection with the solidus down, that is 43 weight percent nickel, and that is the composition of alpha. So these terminal points of the two phase field on this tie line are the compositions of the two phases. So in this case, it's liquid and solid because those are the phases to the left and right. Uh, but whatever two phase field you're in, um, you can determine the, phase, uh, the composition uh, to the left and to the right uh, with the tie line concept like we have here. So that's uh, one of the things that the tie line is going to do for us is it tells us the composition. And so what this also tells us is that for um, a given temperature, right? So if we're at TB, the composition of the liquid and the solid are fixed within this two phase region, right? It doesn't change. So um, if my alloy composition is 35, it doesn't matter. It, that doesn't matter. It's still 32 and 43. If my um, alloy is 40 over here, right, the composition of the liquid and composition of alpha are still the same. So uh, it, whenever we're at the same temperature, the compositions are fixed. And we'll determine later why that's the case that the liquid and the alpha at a given temperature within the two phase field are fixed. We'll, we'll actually show why that is. But for now, just trust us <laughs> and, uh, and uh, the tie line can be used for those compositions. So we know that in this region, we're going to have a mixture of liquid and alpha. So you're going to see distinct regions where you have liquid in some regions, alpha solid particles in the other. And we know that if we sort of do compositional analysis on the liquid, it will have 32 weight percent nickel. And if we do compos if we have the ability to do compositional analysis on the solid alpha particles, we know that it would have 43 weight percent nickel. So that's what the phase diagram is telling us. And that's one of, again, the useful things that it gives us. So we can determine composition in these two phase fields. All right. So we can also tie this tie line uh, back to the water sugar diagram that we looked at before. So let's, because we, you know, this is a two phase region. So let's look at a scenario here. So here, if we're at 20 uh, degrees and we're in somewhere in this region, right? This red line is our tie line. So it's at a uh, single temperature and it goes from the, the, the two lines, right? So this is the line separating solid plus liquid to just liquid. And then this one over here, even though you don't see it, 100% would be the composition of pure sugar, right? So that's the end of it over there. 
And so you can do it in the same way. Oops, sorry. Uh, you can use this tie line um, in the same way with other diagrams like this, with this sugar water uh, example as well.